thank you for joining me. I'm glad you came. Um, we're going to talk about the sincerity of the Word of God today. And it's kind of going to be a twofold discussion. We've already visited about our sincerity, being sincere in our pursuit of Christ likeness, being in pursuit of knowing Him better, knowing the Word better, and being doers of the Word and not hearers only. What I want us to visit about today is the sincerity of the Word of God. Because his, the, his word is the absolute truth and he's not contrary, but there's conditions. And as you walk through the promises, you'll see, he says many times, if you do this, then I can do this. If you do this, then this is going to happen. And we have to understand that there's always this that you have to do first before this can happen. And that's the way it is. And there's, there's just some nuances that I kind of want to delve into. And my prayer today is that this helps you grow as a Christian. This helps you build your faith. This helps you walk more successfully, walk with more victory to feel like, oh yeah, I get that. And put on your full armor and stop giving the enemy weapons to use against you stop giving him legal access and shut the door so that he can't come back in amen so let's get started come let's reason together over the word of god amen so i'm going to pray and then we're going to jump right in father thank you thank you for an opportunity for the privilege and the honor that it is to be your emissary to stand behind your desk so to speak and act on your behalf let me bring no insult or do injury with anything I say or do. Bless the work of my hands. Father, help me speak the truth. Arrest me, convict me if I go in the wrong direction. And help me to convey that which you've laid on my heart fully. And I thank you for it, Lord. I receive it by faith in Jesus' name. Amen. Now receive from him that which he would have you receive. And Listen for him as he ministers to you and as he guides you and teaches you. Now, the definition of sincere, let's start there. Without pretense or deceit, born of genuine feelings or of a genuine heart. This means it's not for show. It's not about... Um, Sister Susie that sits in the next pew knowing that you did these things or that you you were just knowing that you're this super Christian and it's not about other people um, believing in your faith or seeing your faith. That's sincerity is the honest heart fully chasing after the Lord, not because there's going to be any kind of recognition or there's because you want the promises more than you do him, but because you want to know him. You want to walk like him. And his words, the same thing. It's not about a big show. It's not about, um, he raising his banner, but Jesus didn't wander around raising trumpets and, and announcing and exalting. He's like, the last shall be first and the first shall be last. The word of God is there to strengthen you. The word of God is there to give you a foundation to stand on. It is your armory. It is your defense. It is your weapon against the enemy's attacks. And it's, it's unconditional. Now I say that because, and, and I kind of want to hesitate because there's conditions that have to be met. And once the conditions are met, that's, that's just the way it is. Give and it'll give it, be given back to you. Pressed down, shaken together and overflowing. Luke 6, 38. Malachi 3, um, 10, 11. Bring your tithe into the storehouse and prove me herewith and see if I don't open the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing that you cannot contain and rebuke the devourer from touching your stuff. And Deuteronomy 28, if you start with verse 1, says, Diligently hearken unto the voice, verse 1 and 2, Diligently hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God to keep his commandments, to keep his statutes, and all of these blessings will overtake you. And you go through the verses through 14 or 15, and it's one blessing after another. Now you start on 15, and he says, If you don't listen to the voice of God, if you don't keep his commandments, all of the diseases of Egypt, all the curses of Egypt, and all the rest of this world are going to come on you. And there's more than 14 verses there. And it's healing is children's bread. And he sent his word to heal us and deliver us from all destruction. 
but you've got to receive it. What did Jesus say over and over again? Be it done unto you according to your faith. Be it done unto you according to your faith. Your faith has made the whole, he said to one, because it's your faith that generates the power to heal. And I say, I wanted you to take that with a grain of salt. It's your faith that gives God the opportunity to, to heal on and your mind, your body, your emotions, whatever it is. But you have to believe that he will you have to believe that he can before that he can <laughs> now i've got two verses that are kind of our foundation today james 122 and we know that one many of us do anyway um james 122 here it is but be doers of the word and not hearers only deceiving yourself and then john 4 24 says that the lord God is a spirit, and those that will worship him would worship him in spirit and in truth. And spirit there is pneuma or breath. So you worship the Lord with every breath. If you're going to worship him, then you worship him with everything you are and everything you have, not just a little bit. And James says, you got to be a doer of the word first. You got to do what the word says in order for the word to manifest, in order for the word to be productive in your life, in order for the word to do all of the things that we're expecting it to do. And he's going to keep his promises. We have to, let me kind of walk through our sincerity, and then we'll talk more about his sincerity. Because here's, here's a question that I, I asked the other day. How excited and how you know, all warm and fuzzy, do you feel about insincere affection and attention? I mean, honestly, if you are honest with yourself, do you enjoy when somebody comes and spends time with you and just, you know, they love on you and they pat you on the back and there's compliments and all the things, but you know, they don't mean it. They don't want to be there. They're not interested. How well do you receive insincere attention from anybody? And if you don't like it, what makes you think God's interested in it? I mean, if you are, here's another question. Are you sincere about knowing him? Are you sincere about his promises? Because, you know, health, abundance, um, you have all power over the power of the enemy. Kind of talked about that the other day. Lost where it was. Um all the blessings in Deuteronomy 28, Psalm 91, that the angels will lift you up lest you dash your foot upon a stone. The um, fiery darts of the enemy are crushed uh, by the shield of faith. There's just all those promises. 23rd Psalm is a bunch of promises as well. He leads you by steel waters and green pastures. There's peace and there's comfort and there's provision. But they're kind of conditional because, you know, if you don't understand how they come to your life so that you can shut down the enemy from robbing you of them, then you very much become, we got to go back to James one twenty two, And you got to start with verse 23. Let's J James one twenty three. I'm going to go back up to 22 for continuity. But be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourself. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man observing his natural face in a mirror. It's a lie. Oh, that's my note. Never mind. <laughs> Oops. Where'd I go? For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man observing his natural face in a mirror. For he observes himself, goes away, and immediately forgets what kind of man he was. You've got to be a doer of the word and not a hearer only because not doing what the word says, not applying it to your life means that you're not, e you're, you're not even paying attention to seeing that you don't look like Christ. You don't look like the word. You're not meeting the conditions for some of the promises that are conditional. So are you chasing after him or are you chasing after his promise? Now, another question to go hand in hand with that is, are you practicing religion or are you seeking a relationship? Do you want to know him? And I mean, know him intimately. Like somebody was to walk up to you and say, well, what was his favorite color? You're going to know the answer. Now, 
it's kind of frivolous. I don't think he actually has a favorite color. He likes all color. And you can just look around his creation and see all of the various things that he created. That's beside the point. If somebody walks up to you and makes a suggestion or presents with you, presents you with an idea, you know him well enough. You know the Lord well enough to say, mm, he wouldn't have anything to do with that. Nope, he's not in that. Nope, he wouldn't touch that. Or that is all him and I want to be a part of it. But you have to know him personally before you can walk in that kind of understanding and knowing it's very much like knowing if you're going into a restaurant with your loved one knowing what they would and wouldn't want off of the menu hey they would enjoy this let's do this for them you have to get to know him better than that <coughs> so let's talk about um, the difference between a sincere heart and one that is not necessarily so that we can understand that. Well, that brings us back to our verses. Do you worship him in all aspects of your life? John 4.24 says that those that worship the Lord must worship him in spirit and truth. So are you worshiping him with everything in your life and not just Sunday morning church and not just prayers before meals and not just Bible study one night a week, but with the movies you're choosing to watch? What are you allowing to speak into your mind and your feelings with the music you choose to listen to, with the clothes you choose to wear, the places you choose to go, the people you choose to keep company with, the things that you do and participate in. If you are participating in any kind of a project, does it honor God? Is it something that you would be proud to present to him? Hey, I did this or not. So, and that's a difference between a sincere heart and an insincere heart or one that just really is chasing promises more than the person. Because if you're chasing the person, if you know it's contrary to what he has said is acceptable, then you don't want to have any part of it. And now this tells of your motivation too, because if you are just getting to know him or you're just um, sincere about the promises and not the person, then your motivation to do things changes completely because, and we just, we just kind of discussed that your motivation when you're pursuing the person is, you know, I know that's not going to benefit me. And honestly, the answer would be when somebody says, why won't you do that? Because it doesn't bless me. It doesn't honor God and it's not going to bless me. It's going to pull me further away from him. It's going to damage the relationship I'm, I'm seeking. It's going to bring corruption into my thinking, whatever it is. And if you are pursuing the promises, you won't care if it honors him or not. Now, um, that just brings you back to, do you know him or do you just know about him? Do you know the things he likes? Do you know what his word says about the different things? Are you looking for whatever it is you're doing to be listed specifically? Oh, this is a sin rather than understanding that it's not honorable. It's not going to honor him and it's not going to bless you. It's sure enough going to pull you away because we get caught up in, well, the Bible doesn't specifically say that that's a sin. So I don't know why you're after me. Well, okay. So first of all, does it, does it, how do I want to say that father? Does it, is it an example? Does it exemplify love for God, love for his word, and love for his children or for your brethren? Because Jesus said, two commandments I give you that are more important than the first 10. Love God with everything you are, with all of your heart, all of your mind, all of your spirit. Love God first and all, most. And then love your neighbor as much as you love yourself. So, those are, that's kind of the litmus test. Does that, doing that, whatever it is, speak of loving God with everything I have? Or is it going to defeat me or destroy me or cause me? It's going to not bless me. Is there anything in it that suggests that it's not about God? It's not, it's not going to, you know, it's, it's not that he said, oh, don't do it. It's, you shouldn't be doing that because it's going to hurt you. And I'm not sure. I just went in a couple of circles. Um, Father, help me make sense of the things that I've just said. 
Are you sincere about him? Or are you sincere about his promises? Now, how does that translate into the topic we really wanted to get into today is in the sincerity of his word? Um, there's conditions, which we talked about. John 16, 13 says the Holy Spirit will guide you into all the truth that there is. And we need to remember that in order for that to happen, we have to listen to the Holy Spirit tell us when he's warning us, don't go do this, or that's a bad idea. Or he says, hey, do this, don't do this, whatever it is. We have to practice listening in order for him to guide us into anything. Um, Ephesians 3, 4, and 5, and then Colossians 1, 27, both tell us that the mystery of the word, the mystery of salvation, the mystery of God is revealed to his children. You're not going to understand the word until you ask to be, um, until you, uh, oof, why am I having so much trouble? Why is this struggling? Until you ask for things to be revealed, to ask to understand, ask Jesus to be your Lord and Savior because there are certain things that just are revealed by the Holy Spirit and receiving the Holy Spirit is part of being saved. When you you become a new creature, a new creation in Christ and a new spirit, you've given a new heart and the Holy Spirit ministers the truth of your salvation to you and you will receive the Holy Spirit at that point and that's when he starts teaching you and you're not fully going to understand the word of God. You're not going to get to know Jesus personally until that happens. So you first you have to become a child of God. That's one of the conditional things. The word of God is rich and it's beautiful and it just blossoms as you read it and you're like, oh, I get that and oh, I understand that. But you have to let him teach you and he can't teach you if you haven't received him. Amen. It's not just for anybody. Here's another thing. Do you have a legal right to the information? That's what we just talked about. The flip of that is, are you giving the enemy a legal right to um, defeat you? To if, Are you giving them a legal right to enter your property, to come into your life, to come into your mind, to come into your house? And, you know... There's a scripture that tells us that no weapon formed against you shall prosper and every tongue that rises against us shall be condemned. This is the heritage of the saints. But that's not just for everybody. This is for the children of God. No weapon formed against you, including the ones that you form. Now, you've got to be careful. You're going to walk into a battle when you give the enemy a legal right to be there. And you can't stop him. You will never stop giving him access until you get to know the Lord personally. You know what the word says. You're reading what it tells you to do. You're reading what it tells you not to do. And then you learn where the boundaries are. So, hey, that door is locked and the enemy can't walk through it unless I open it. Now I understand that and I'm not going to do that. But you're not going to do that until you become a doer of the word and not a hearer only. Now, in James chapter 1, I want to back up to verse 13. It says, Let no one say when he is tempted, I am tempted by God, for God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he himself tempt anyone. So when temptation comes, God didn't do it. Either you've opened the door, given the enemy a legal right or access, or he's simply trying to trip you up. All temptation comes from the enemy specifically and it's a matter of is he just trying to attack you or did you invite the opportunity it does not come from god trials and temptations do not come from the lord only that which is good and and um oh i've lost the word well edifying there we go if it's good it came from god if it's not it didn't it's just that simple um, picking up on verse 14, but each one is tempted when he's drawn away by his own desires and enticed. Then when desire is conceived, it gives birth to sin and sin when it's full grown brings forth death. Do not be deceived, my beloved brethren. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above. See, I knew I saw, I knew I read it and comes down from the father of lights with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. Of his own will, he brought us forth by the word of truth that we might be a kind of first fruits, first fruits for his creatures. 
Everything that's good and perfect comes from God. Every Anything that is not, the enemy is tempting you. And either you've brought it on by your own, um, I'm going to say sinful desires, lusts of the flesh, or the enemy's trying to trip you up and cause you to stumble. One of those two things. And if you don't know the word of God, if you're not reading the word and then following it absolutely and with sincerity, then he has a legal right in some cases. You've given him access. Now, I told you we we're going to talk about the sincerity of the word. And we've talked a lot about the importance of the word and how it guards us and what it teaches us so that we can walk with sincerity. Now, I want to talk to you about the sincerity of it completely because the word itself is absolute. I mean, there's no... Um, uh, unless he says if in the word itself, there's no if, there's no maybe. When he says, by his stripes, we are healed, that's what he means. We are healed. And you know, it's, it appears twice in scripture. By his stripes, we are healed. And by his stripes, we were healed. And then he says, he sent his word to heal us and deliver us from all destructions. That's not sometimes. That's not once in a while. That's every time. His will, his intention is for us to be healed. It's not his fault or his choosing when we are not. There is something else at play. In many, many, many cases, it's spiritual warfare and we didn't fight on the right side, right um, front line. Or there was doubt that allowed him to um, manipulate our thinking and, and turn, turn us into fear. There's um, not truly believing that he will, regardless of what comes here, it matters what's here because it's by your faith, let it be done unto you. He is not contrary. He watches over his word to make sure that it's performed. Let's see. Jeremiah 1 12 says he makes sure his word is fulfilled. He makes sure his word is fulfilled. Now, what I want to talk to you about briefly in, in closing this today is that that goes both ways, both for his promises for healing, his promises for wisdom and strength and victory, his promises for finances and, and favor and all the things, but also his promises to everybody else including you. And the one I want to bring to your attention is Matthew 25, 37 through 40. And if you'll read through that, it says, what you do to these, the least of my brethren, you do also unto me. And we have got to remember that as Christians, we're not um, immune to the very same thing that we expect him to do to people that offend us. That what you do to the least of these, my brethren, you do also unto me. So the next time you get mad at somebody and you've decided you're going to tell them off, just go ahead and put God's face on front of theirs so that you can see who you're actually talking to. And I'm going to let that sink in for a minute because that what you do to the least of these, my brethren, you do also unto me. If you're going down the road and you're mad at the guy in the truck in front of you because I've got, I've got, bless him. Ooh, Father, bless him and help me to remember to bless him. There is a, I'm going to say it's a farmer, an elderly gentleman that drives down the county road I take to work in the mornings. And when I get behind him, I've learned to leave much earlier <laughs> so that I don't get behind him. But when I get behind him, um, I'm always, always, always going to be 15 minutes late because he drives in the middle of the county road. There's no lines, you know, barely get two cars to pass anyway. He drives in the middle of County Road and five miles under the speed limit. So you are going to drive slower, whether you like it or not. And you can't go around him, even if you find an opportunity on a straight place where it's a little bit wider because he's in the middle and you're not going around. And it is such a temptation to be like, get out of the way. But I, the word of God is absolute and it's sincere. That which you do to the least of these, my brethren, you do also unto me. You know, the um, telemarketer or the bill collector that called and was ugly and you yelled back, that which you do to the least of these, my brethren, you do also unto me. You know, there's a place in scripture that says, I'll bless those that bless you and I will curse those that curse you. Stop and think about that for a minute and then turn it around so that you can see the sincerity of, in the in that text i will bless you when you bless others and i will curse you when you curse others 
Being a child of God means that you have access to his word, to his power, to the kingdom. And it's you have the promises that you can walk in. But it does not make you immune to the sincerity of the word itself. You know, we went through all of this for 25 minutes just so that we could understand that in order for us to walk in sincerity, we have to avoid religious practice with absolute defiance. Avoid it at all costs. Religion will kill you. Religion focuses on the works that you do, the things that you do for the church, the times you go, the, how often you pray. Sincerity wants to know him and is going to take every opportunity to do to it, but do so. But it's not about the behavior. It's about the motivation and the desire. And we have to get to know him through his word. We have to be doers of the word and not hearers only. Otherwise, how will we ever understand that we're giving the enemy an opportunity to bring temptation to us? Because we can read in James where it tells us that temptation does not come from the Lord. Every good and perfect thing that comes from heaven is from God. But none of the rest of that is. And we are giving him legal access to us when we're not doers of the word. And when we don't understand that he just wants to protect us. He just wants to show us a better way. The word of God is not a rule book that says don't, 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 don't. The word of God is meant to reveal the enemy's traps and reveal the truth of the kingdom he's created. This present um, kingdom that we're in so that we can see supernatural. This is what God says do and that has to respond to it. But if I do this, the enemy has access and I've just given him a token to get on my carousel and ride around with me. We have to understand that the, through the word of God is how he reveals to us the truth of everything the enemy hides and deceives and gives you the, the power to fight back unconditionally. Many, many his, of his promises have conditions like tithing. Healing is received by faith. Let be it done unto you according to your faith. Your faith has made thee whole. His word is absolute in all things, and it's with it's sincere. You're going to walk on both sides of it. As you bless others, he'll bless you. He'll bless those that bless you. As you curse others, you open the door for the enemy to attack and curse you. And the Lord will allow curses or step away it's it's I'm not sure how to say that because he doesn't curse people um but you understand the concept I'm getting at because I don't want to put I don't want to change scripture that's not what I'm here for Jeremiah 112 says he makes sure that his word is fulfilled he's watching over Isaiah 55 11 says his word will never return void but will accomplish that which it's sent to accomplish good bad and indifferent so which side of it are you walking on are you sincere about getting to know him, getting to know the person? Or are you sincere about his promises? Where's your motivation? And in saying that, do you understand the sincerity of the word? God does not bring you trial or temptation, nor does he bring curse on you. He's shown you that when you do these things, you open the door for the enemy or you open the door for, for the power of God to operate in your life. Sitting around begging God to do something, when you've done something contrary to his word, you were not a doer of the word, but a hearer only, is, is not very productive because he's waiting for you to be repentant of what you did because your repentance covers the sin in the blood of Jesus and removes you from the enemy's access. Begging him to fix something that you broke and he's waiting on you to actually be sorry for having done the breaking and not the results of the breaking so that everything he put in place supernaturally in the kingdom can move in and whisk you up. You know, the 91st Psalm, if you start at the beginning, it says you abide in the shadow of the Most High. You cry out, he is your God. You've surrendered to him. You're following after him. And because of that, because you call on his name as your Lord and Savior, the angels lift your foot up lest you dash, a foot, lest you dash your foot upon a stone. Because of that, you, the plagues will not come near your dwelling. Because of that, you're protected from all these things. But there's a because you did this, 
the kingdom of God automatically responds, the power of God automatically responds in this manner. Because that's the way he set all of this up. And the word of God is sincere in that whatever it says is what is going to be the truth. So which side of it are you walking on? What seed have you sown that you're going to reap? Amen. One more point and then I'll let you go. We are responsible. We are responsible for our faith. We are responsible for being examples. If you call yourself a Christian, if you have declared that you are a child of God, you are responsible for the example you set for everybody else. Now, I'm not saying that to scare you or make you feel bad or, or bring shame or guilt. I'm saying that because you need to understand that if you are not a doer of the word, but a hearer only, not only are you giving the enemy access to your faith, to your walk, but you're showing others that, that it might not be successful that you're going to struggle. So be careful of what you do. Be careful of what you let the enemy trip you with and the access you give him. Amen. Now I kind of went multiple circles and down a couple of rabbit holes. Um, I pray, Father, let it make sense. Father, I'm trusting that every sidebar I took was because you had somebody that had something they need to hear and that it was not frivolous or a waste of time. I ask that you bless this word, bless this assignment, and bless those that would receive it. I thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, I love you, but more importantly, so much more importantly, he loves you. Have a good day.